Um, I've got a question about your, the assignment for the students. Um, so they have to go find their own article, yeah. and then they upload them to the private course blog, and then they annotate them? So they send us a link. Um, we look at it. Uh, ideally, they've spoken to us about it before, because you can kind of go wrong. Like if you pick a really long text, or if you pick a text that just is super specific and it's not going to relate to a lot of course material. So we go through some kind of like a brainstorm session where we get them to think about what's going to make for a good text, you know. Oftentimes it's like manifestos, um, company mission statements, you know, there are, I mean, the particular interest in my course is like tech discourses about technology over time and over the history of the web. So I want them to find things that, that relate to course material. So we sort of prep them to figure out how to pick the right text. They send us a link, then I just copy and paste it in the blog. Okay. Um, so you know, it takes a little bit of work for sure on my end. Um, so your students don't have access to the WordPress blog other than as viewers. They and could annotate over. They could. We could certainly have them do that. Just for this point in the process, we decided to do it ourselves. Okay. But yeah, there's no reason why we couldn't make that available. To them. So you guys have quite a collection of texts on your site. Then. We will, yeah, we'll have 25 at the end of this semester, and you know, you could see going through a whole bunch more of them. Yeah. Thank you. And again, they're just kind of pages they've picked from all over the web. Some of them, it's like Google's privacy policies, you know, and they'll and they'll go through and they'll 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 sort of critique uh, how we understand what Google, how Google's presenting its privacy policy with respect to other things we've talked about in the course. So yeah, I mean, this is what the course blog. Um, the course blog looks like, right? So it, it looks fairly uh, normal like any other kind of website. The address of the course blog is courses.com arts, you know, uh, 346. If you put this genius.it in front of it, um, it should show you the change here. So then you come to basically another layer of the web that has uh, the annotations that I've already done on it, right? So, and this is where all the annotations pop up, and it's literally as easy as clicking and adding there um, so you can see the kind of annotations. Now this is um, annotations that a student did although I just copied uh, theirs over to this model uh, version of it. Um, if you wanted to create a new annotation it's as simple as kind of uh, highlighting a piece and then usually there'll be a, a little annotation button that pops up here. Uh, I'm not sure why it's not showing right now but maybe because this text is already done. Um, there are other places on the web, so this is just, you know, like a, a, a news website. Uh, and again, if you just type genius.it in front of it, you'll, you'll come and see the, the annotations that other people have done on the site. Uh, I was trying to find just a couple of examples of those here. Um, so, you know, you can put genius.it in front of any website that you can go to now. I mean, there's some that block it, or there's some that, um, don't have the functionality, or some you need like the Chrome bookmarklet for, so it doesn't work everywhere. Like the New York Times and Medium posts on the on the website Medium for some reason don't work. Well, Medium has their own, right? Right, and I think they're working on some other kind of integration with them, but so it, it's not, you know, it's a bit hit and miss, which is why we did the like I'll copy it over to the blog because I literally just need to come to any site and kind of copy and paste it. Um, what did we do? We we did your site, right? So like John's site is this, right? It looks like a fairly normal site, somebody's personal website. You sort of go to, sorry, this is hard to do this way. Genius.it, right? And this in theory should work with almost any, anything. So then, you know, rather than just seeing his regular page, what you'll see is the uh, annotation that we added uh, the other day, which was like, hey, yeah. that was awesome. <laughs> awesome. And again, I'm, I hope this is working here, but yeah, I'm not sure why, if it's because it's on some. Uh, do you have to be logged in to type in the genius that IT? You do, or? and I should be logged in, which is why I'm not sure why. But usually when you highlight something like this, there'll be a little button here that says annotate when you have it on the site. And so you I always have to click the bookmarklet yeah. before I had the capability, even if I was looking at 
always, in the three days that I've been playing with this, right. it seemed like I had to have just clicked the bookmarklet on that page before I could annotate it. Yeah, see, it's working on my screen here. Maybe I'll try and just mirror image, because this is it. Oh, right. So I'm not sure why I wasn't working on the display presentation, oh, huh. but uh, just highlight, annotate, and then you know it's uh, you know you can add your annotation. Hey John, great site. Um, <laughs> if you if you want, uh, you can just kind of add an image, right? So you just get the. Get the length of the image. Uh, where's John's link here? Add the link as a. Uh, that's probably not going to be right to the thing, is it? Let's go this way. Grab the link, annotate. So you don't have to add the add do mm -hmm. you add the image text that was there? Right. Yeah. So you just you can just literally kind of add links like that. If you add video link like that, you can add um, GIFs, you can add JPEGs, and it tends to deal with most media um, fairly well. So you know, I mean, it's kind of it's fun. It's, it's quick videos as well. If you type in a YouTube video yep. URL, you get yep, the YouTube video will be in there. So like almost all multimedia content that you want to add. I haven't tried SoundCloud and things like that, but I assume it it, it works well with that as as well. Um, but you know, you could then just kind of see going through John's entire website and right. <laughs> so, like, say you wanted to add a link to Top Hat here. You had the website. So then students can link out to other material on the web as well when they're doing their their their, their annotations. So I mean, yeah, that's that's the basics of how that annotation works. So like I said, now that they have a platform on which you can do this on any page, um, I question whether or not or why I should keep making it like a private tool, you know, where like it's just our web pages on a class blog. Like why not send them out onto the entire web and do it that way? I've thought about whether or not there could be group assignment versions of this where you work in pairs and kind of annotate or even work as a section. My class is divided into five sections of 20. Uh, I just haven't figured out how to grade that in a way that seems equivalent to the other three projects that are part of that final project. Yeah. So that annotation that you made is now available to anyone who goes to the Genius at Version. Right, so if you go to John's genius version of the site, um, then yeah, that'll be there. Now, I should say, I actually worry a little bit. I mean, there, I haven't seen a ton of people using this kind of version of the site or this, this portion of the site, but like I worry about what that means for what you could do to somebody's website. You know, yeah. like you could literally write anything you wanted on top of John's website here, which is like ethically quite worrisome. I don't think my students would do that as something I'd be grading them for, but I mean, you could certainly see a whole other layer of spam on the internet happening here. Um, Amy and I found an example of spam that was not like offensive, but just kind of made us giggle. Lena, yeah, Lena Dunham, okay, so I was going to use that example. Yeah, that was the one that I'd and seen. And this as woman, well. like, on every page, was like putting this whole set of information about endometriosis, and she was like. I'm spamming because this information is so important. We were like, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it was somebody, I, I, I don't know what the root of the concern was. I mean, she was writing, Lena Dunham was writing a post about body size and about diet. And, and somebody, yeah, jumped in and was like, I've got like this activist concern about endometriosis and it's not being heard. So, and she put it on li li literally every line of Lena Dunham's page. So, you know, I, I mean, they have moderators there like Wikipedia does. And I think they're working to kind of lessen that kind of stuff because the the, the comments you know are visible um, through the platform in some ways. So I, I kind of worry about it, you know, and they have these they have these you know tools for reporting abuse and that kind of stuff. Again, I haven't worried about it too much because mine's been a fairly private annotation thing, but 
Um, when I think about like what it means for the future of the web, it raises a bunch of concerns. But um, in terms of just like being able to annotate in a way that's kind of slick and quick and multimedia, um, I sort of like the tool in, in that sense. But yeah, anybody can now go to that to John's site and see those extra annotations that we added if you know that there's that genius IT. It's kind of made me want to like go and check out a whole bunch of sites on the internet and see like what this secret layer of the internet looks like. Yes. Yeah. So what? So the blog class blog site, uh, you have to log in to get that one. Yeah. So if you wanted to do the genius side of that, you have to be logged into that page, so it's private. Or yeah. So you're logged into the genius. You have to have an account at Genius in order to do this. Sure. Uh, and that's the one thing I also do offer an option where you could just do this in Word or in a Google Doc. Yeah. If students don't want to sign up because I don't want to make them sign up for a service that they don't sure. want to be a part of. I mean, there's also four other options for the assignment. So, um, but yeah, the, the class pages are private that like you got to log in through your net ID to be able to access your own page. Sure. sure. Yeah. Okay. And what was, what changed? I, I, I don't know if I just quite didn't understand it. Um, what changed that you couldn't, you had to switch how you use Genius? So they used to have um, on the site, um, I used to come to the site, I used to upload a text to the site. Um, oh. So I would upload a text to Genius and I would say, you know, um, John Perry Barlow's Declaration of Independence, here's that site on Genius. And then what I could do, there was a button here that said make class page, and I could basically make like 30 copies of that same page. Because there's only supposed to be one page of each thing, right? Like, take like California Love, the song. Like, there's yeah. not going to be 40 different versions of that annotation on the site. There's just the one version with multiple annotations. I wanted to be able to judge many students annotating the same text. So I had to find a way to create multiple mm -hmm. copies of the text on the site. So what I ended up doing... So they got rid of that. Yeah, they got rid of the class page, you know, so for example here, like I have, you know, 10 things we know to be true. This is like Google's early manifesto. Um, so, you know, we had multiple students do this uh, thing. So I had to have the source text and then I had to have each student version of the text. Um, so, and you can see that across like multiple uh, assignments. But the only way to have like a, a double copy of a page on there was to create a class version of it. Okay. So I'd like to make different ones. So they took away the class pages huh. because they were like, well, we want people to be out there annotating. Like I said, when I talked to them on the phone, they're like, oh, why don't you get you know, your folks to contribute to the site? And I'm like, well, I understand that's a benefit for your site, but like the way that I'm going to be marking students in this is more about this part of it rather than about public writing. And so I want to be able to have control of it, you know. So th they, were, they were always sort of saying, yeah, well, maybe in the next iteration you should make it more public, you should make it more. Um, so, you know, they, I think they're torn between, like, people wanting to use their site as this, like, private repository just because the technology is really good versus wanting to use this thing that contributes to the public domain in some way. Okay. So they still do a genius, they still have a genius page you can upload text to. And yeah, it. yeah, genius is still there. Like, the, the site itself is still... But then there's this annotation. Here, and they still have, so they, you know, I mean, they still have lyrics. They've now branched out into a whole bunch of different genres. They still have text, you know, so if you were doing an English class, you could upload whatever text you were doing that, that year. I mean, a lot of the really interesting assignments um, are like high school or early uh, university courses, and they just get the whole class to go through, you know, they'll be reading a text for the whole semester, and they just get the whole class to just be annotating as, as they're going. Um, so you can still do that here. You can you can add songs. You can add texts. Uh, as far as I know, you can still um, you can still do all the stuff that you were able to do before. You just can't make private versions of it. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Your annotations show up on the same page, just off to the side when, you, when you're doing it there. Yeah. I just created an account, and for some reason my annotations go to a different. Uh, I'm sort of like clicking on my. Annotations. Yeah. How you uh, like the um, Yeah, like they just show up on the right there. Yeah. And yours are not? No. Where do they show up? It goes to a different screen and shows the annotations. Like the whole other page. Yeah. Um 
Are you in Chrome? Yeah, I've tested it on Safari and Chrome. I haven't tested it on that. I think they have a specific bookmark. Did you use the bookmark? I've never used the bookmark. Did sorry? Did you when you were using it? it? Yeah. Yeah. Does it work okay? Yeah, it's yeah. fine. Yeah. But that's for for what for what browser for Chrome? I was using it in Firefox, I think. Okay. Um and yeah, so I would go to a page and then instead of click instead of doing the Genius IT, like if I went to a page and then I clicked the bookmark, yeah. but then it would. Okay. Show me it as if it was genius.it, yeah. and then I could select text, and it, the annotate thing would pop up like you showed. And, and did it come out on the side? Uh huh. Or it did the same thing. Place? It came up on the side. Yep. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure. I haven't tested it on a whole whack of uh, of browsers, um, but you signed up for a Genius account already, so you have that. Yeah. yeah. And you, I still have to sign up for a Genius account to use the bookmark list. Yeah. Like I, I could. You can't do that. Yeah. Anymore. No, you have to be logged into their yeah. system yeah. in order to do it. Um, but yeah, I've only ever seen them come out the side, so that would be new. I'll have to come and look and see, because maybe my students are running into that problem as well. I haven't actually had a lot of tech complaints about it, which I thought I might have more. <laughs> I've got um, one. So I'm on my site, and I'm just clicked on the anything with Genius bookmarklet, and so I'm like, oh, okay, I will go connect with Google, because I connected with my wisc.edu Google site. But whenever I do that, I get a, oops, this doesn't, do something weird. This doesn't yeah. work. I'm like, all right, no worries. I'll go back and I'll authenticate with Twitter. But same thing happens with Twitter, and it's just I'm not. Let, it's not letting me annotate right now. But it did yesterday when we were yeah. working on this. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, uh, I again, like I've sort of not had a lot of problems myself, and I don't know. Um, like, so I haven't had to troubleshoot a lot. But are you not signed in? No, I'm not signed in. It's, if you look at it, I logged Okay, but th when you get that message, it's saying that you're not signed it in. It does, right. But if I go to genius.com standard, not the picture right there, I'm signed in. So, yeah, I don't right. know. So unless there's a way for me to get to the site. From here. Right. I don't know. Uh, you could also just try restarting your browser. Yeah. And then log in and then go to your site from there. I've the browser for years. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when browsers would crash all over the <laughs> five times a day? All right. Well, let's get a chance to have you guys dig in. How many of you have uh, played with it and started an account already? Is it working? Yeah. I am there. All right, and uh, how could this be? I was thinking, what was I thinking? I thought of you the other day for language. How are the way, what ways could annotations be used in <laughs> courses? And I was thinking that, um, I know what I was thinking of you because I was thinking you could embed audio. So, I wrote a note there about it as well. But I think that, um, and maybe it was under hypothesis. One of these lets you actually do recordings. So you can have your students read over the text as it's going through, so they can practice their, their reading of the text. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just going to see if I can grab a. So you can do recording as well. Yeah, that was under medium three. Uh, annotate something, number four. Read the text. SoundCloud. SoundCloud can be embedded in the annotations, yeah. so they can just read. Yeah, SoundCloud can be embedded here. I just uh, added one. Yep. Um, and while we're on the topic of annotation, uh, SoundCloud is also a great annotation site that I use in another class that I uh, do. 
it allows you to have a sound file uploaded and then um, students can comment on specific parts of the file. So uh, we listen to a file publicly and uh, it's a class about like making radio, making audio. Um, and I got them to annotate at various points in the, in the file. So you see their, their little avatars here, but this is then basically talking about the production aspects of that sound. So, um, you know, you can, you can, on Genius, talk about the whole file, right? Like, go oh, take a listen to, take a listen to this file as a link to it, but if you actually wanted to get in and annotate specific parts of the file, SoundCloud is kind of a, a useful tool for that. On the back of the activity sheet, we walked, Amy and I explored a bunch of other annotation tools for multimedia specifically, so we've got um, a link to SoundCloud with video instructions on how to do what um, Jeremy is just showing. But we also have things like VidSocially, which um, is kind of a cool way to let people add their own annotations to videos. So at time frame, you know, 12 minutes into the video, you can stop and add a comment directly at that point in the video, which is kind of a neat way, and then they're their picture will show up, or whoever the commenter's picture will show up at the bottom of the, the timeline at the 12 minute mark, and you can just click over to that, and it goes directly to what they're referring to, and then their comment shows up. What? That what kind of stuff that? is pretty neat. Vid socially, it's on the back page under medium, annotating and text is great. What about multimedia? Uh, video Ant at University of Minnesota, I played around with a little bit last year. Um, with one of our active teaching lab files. And that was kind of a, a neat thing. Not as beautiful or smooth as, um, as some of these things could be. What's amazing with the video annotation is this was apparently a huge thing in like 2005 to 2009, and now there's like very little. Like it was, people were, college, Harvard had one. University of Madison had multimedia author thing in 2003 to multimedia author annotation. Mm -hmm. But it's dead now. The University of Minnesota has one. Yeah. Northwestern had one that they started working on and just kind of died. So I don't know if it was the, the funding disappeared yeah. or people recognized that they could do it on YouTube or mm -hmm. other places. So they're like, why are we spending our research dollars on this one? The private companies are doing it. What kind of text do you usually have students? Oh, good question. That was one that I wanted to ask. Um, manifestos. Say, yeah, right? so manifestos, uh, I mean, I like to look for things that are um, generally quite positive about how awesome technology is so that they can bring mm -hmm. some of the stuff they've learned in the class about like ways in which technology has always kind of okay. been problematic and challenging. So we've had, uh, well, let's see, 10 things we know to be true. So that's Google's, you know, like, we do no evil kind of manifesto speech yeah. from, from when they began. Um, so students are really good about then taking like some of the stuff we've done in our privacy and surveillance weeks and they bring that to bear on some of this. So like Google saying the web should be all this stuff, uh, should be this accessible. Well, we've just learned the ways in which it's not often that. Um, we the web kids is kind of like a manifesto for web 2.0. It's sort of like we're a generation that shares, we're a generation that likes to you know, um, always be connected. And so, uh, <coughs> again, they bring critiques of Web 2.0 that we talk about in the class to bear on that text. Um, new clues, <coughs> this is kind of another, another sort of inter internet manifesto, same, same thing here. Um, you will link to this post is a very kind of funny satirical post about um, why people feel the need to share everything all the time. So they bring some of our stuff on the week on Facebook that we do, the stuff we do on uh, on sharing and on filter bubbles. Um, we have a big section of the class on anonymous and a, on anonymity and the role of anonymity on the web, the positives and um, negatives of it. So uh, we had one year we had a text called uh, We Are Anonymous, which just kind of uh, um, anonymous describing what it does. So these are all sort of, they're very traditional text in this new media platform. These are essays, they're manifestos. They're, uh, yeah, they're blog they're posts, they're blog text posts, text they're text. mission statements. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're not, you know, like uh, multimedia essays generally, like they're, they're primarily text-based. Um, I'm trying to think here. 
I wonder if I can show you. Except I, for SoundCloud, of course. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's all text, text based because, I mean, this, this sort of. If I can get to. We all seem to do like some variations on primary documents. Mm -hmm. Right. That's exactly like when I'm going thinking about like history, like this would be really. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, I mean, that's, that's the. The primary stuff that's on 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 the site itself, mm -hmm. um, right? People will go back to yeah. the original source yeah, documents. Really um, I don't know how much it's going to have changed um, based on what people. All right, so this is uh, this is the back end of what the site currently looks like. So this is I haven't even the assignment was due yesterday, so this is the new the newest round of the, but you can see some of the kinds of things. So people are doing. You know stuff related to Trump and uh, and the internet. Um, there's a Facebook post, uh, secret history of hypertext. So you know, I mean, they're, they're sort of pulling random articles that they've found, and then they're they're trying to apply course material to that. And again, you know, we do a section on net neutrality, so somebody will probably be bringing in a bunch of stuff on on that um, Facebook's data policy. Instagram Nothing about endometri endometriitis, though. Nothing about endometriosis, uh, just just yet. Um, so, yeah, but I mean, you could you could certainly, like, you know, get them to go go find kind of original historical texts if, if that's where you were, if that's where where, where your course lies. Uh, uh, policy documents, um, you know. Ooh, but you know, like, but also like medical. Medical evaluations or medical, <coughs> medical like um, diagnoses and stuff like that. If you're right. doing that, you can parse that apart, take it apart, tell what it, tell what it means. Political documents. Yeah. Oh yeah, law documents. Yeah, you know, law documents. I mean anything. Yeah. I think it's really and, it, and the technology seems to want to get out of the way, which is what I'm. Most yeah, I mean you know like I said, there there is there's definitely like it's not the smoothest process on all computers. Like as as uh, the guy who Josh. left yeah was saying, um, you know like I mean. I, and I don't know why to explain like why yours isn't isn't working. Um, so it, it's not like it's not perfect. And I don't know how it does with um, PDFs. Like it works on web text really well, mm -hmm. right? But if we went to uh, somewhere where there was I don't know like a Supreme Court decision and it's in like this old PDF that's been scanned in, I, like I don't know how easy that is to annotate. I haven't tried that level of annotation. So does it it annotates text? But does it annotate like space? Like if you have like does it well if you went to a page and said, Oh, there's a picture of this person. Right. And it's on this web page, why is this person there? Well then let's select that space yeah. wherever that picture is. Well um, does the annotate have Try to annotate it in Google form. That's oh. awesome. Can you annotate things with like that? <laughs> I don't know. That seems too it seems to be freaking out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can annotate that fine, but yeah, I don't seem to be able to annotate just the, it gives me the option to, which gives me hope that it might be possible. Yeah. Or you can annotate the whole thing, I can into that. Yeah, so I think okay. it gets a little wonkier when it's non-text material. I can totally imagine for grad school as, like, when I learned how to read at sort of a graduate school academic level, there were so many tricks that I had to learn over the years that, you know, it's not about reading through it, it's about recognizing who are the speakers, what are their academic camps, and how are they, mm -hmm. you know, those kinds of, if somebody had annotated a seminal text in my field and said, here's how to read this kind of yeah. a text, this would be super helpful for me. It would have saved me probably a couple of years of struggling to like yeah, yeah. read through this stuff and be like, I don't understand any of this. Yeah. And I mean it's it's just it's a taken to the you know what what you know what people have been doing for thousands of years. Right. That's what the Jewish Mishnah is. It's yeah. a book about the the Torah, right? right. The Tanakh. And then that's what John Calvin is doing in the sixteenth right. century as well. He's just writing commentaries on the Bible. So yeah. I mean this is but it's taking it putting it online and allowing you to really interface and interact with it and pull things in I think that's yeah. really Cool. So it's a valuable tool because it's obviously something that's been going on for right. thousands of years, and yeah. now we're just bringing it up to make it more accessible, where yeah. you don't have to have access to a publisher. Yeah. 
Yeah, in their educational videos, you know, that they have along with it of like why they justify it for classes is exactly yeah. the same. They're like students sit on the couch and they read and they put these annotations in their in their books, but then it stays there. You know, like why not create a conversation around that stuff? Like make them annotate that and then make your class discussion be about be about what people are writing on. I was just thinking about that. I took a class in, as part of my graduate work here where the teacher would, the instructor would give us really intense reading guides for an article that we were reading, kind of like what you were talking about, John. And I, and I think it would have been cool to see, to have an online version of the article and then see those questions just embedded in the text because you're always like going back and forth between the article and the reading guide. Right. So which brought me to the question of, then if other students annotated it, but all I wanted to see was the teacher's annotations, right. like are there ways to filter and say, I don't want to see this person's annotations, I just want to see this person's annotations? Yeah, um, so I, I <coughs> don't know based on how that I've been using it, I haven't required those functionalities, so I haven't looked into it a ton. I know you can filter to see like just one student, like as the teacher, oh. you can filter just to like, see what you submitted versus okay. what John submitted. So that's that within like, WordPress though, right? Uh, that no, the, that's that's within the, the, the... So if you click on yeah. the Google Forms as, you know, that will show up your, the, all of the annotations on the page, right? Right, or, or and no. you can filter by, you know, me You're versus the if oh, there was no. another user in here. You know, if there was 10 of us, then I could just see, like yours, I could just see mine. That's cool. That's and so, presumably, if I was the teacher, then, and you just wanted to see my comments and not your colleagues, right. then you could just pick the, the teacher there. That's very cool. I keep thinking of Jan Ronowski's critical reader and how he uh -huh. annotates the text with the video and oh, highlights no. words mm -hmm. and defines them there. Um, it seems like this is a yeah. the way to do exactly the same. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what it means if you're on a semester basis and you use the same text every right. semester and you get like a <laughs> hundred students annotating the same text every, you know what I mean? Like, you, I, I think you kind of have to think about like what the longevity of the right. assignment is. But Which is um, why your thing of copying the text onto the, the course right. the WordPress site is great because right. then you have a fresh copy every semester. Yeah. But then it, again, it does keep the students from engaging in like the actual internet wide right. Right, right, conversation. Right. So, yeah. um, I have another question. Um, are, is there anything with FERPA? Like FERPA is the one about privacy of students. Yeah. Like, is there anything like if, if your students are publishing on or annotating on a public website, is there anything you need to be taking into account with FERPA? Yeah, and this is what I don't know. I mean, this is partly why I've kept it private because right. I don't actually know okay. how public I can make these things. But I'm also getting pressure. I mean, because we're part of uh, ComArts has like a digital studies certificate oh. um, in ComArts, so you can you know take a bunch of courses related to digital stuff. So I get a lot of students in all my classes that have want to do this digital studies certificate mm -hmm. and what, like their capstone project has to be some kind of public, mm -hmm. like the, the assignment has to be out in public right. when it's done. So I'm not sure, I mean, I'm not sure at what point it is. It's like <laughs> all the grading stuff and all the like work up to the final thing has to be private and then it gets made public. Mm -hmm. But like people uh, who come into my classes need these things to be public, you know? So right. I said on the genius one, like uh, this is a private assignment, but you can make it public at the end if, it, if you need it to fulfill your requirement. Mm -hmm. But I don't, you know, I have, to, I have to figure out if I do go like make this a more public thing. Like right. uh, again, I, I'm not sure, I don't know how that FERPA stuff interacts. I know people do all these like Wikipedia assignments where they're publicly editing all the time. So right. I mean, I know there's the possibility of doing public assignments, but I don't, uh, yeah. I've kept it private, so I haven't had to worry about it. I will have to worry about it if I, if I don't. How do you set the privacy? How do you set the privacy? So the, b right now it's set through the course blog. Uh, when it's on the class pages, you don't actually know the class pages exist unless you have the link to them. So I mean, okay. technically, I guess somebody could make it public. Um, you know, like if I sent you the link to one of my students' assignments, you could access it. but unless somebody went to the trouble of making it extremely public, then, you know, and in most cases, students just want to get in, do their assignment, and kind of get out. <laughs> um, but, but if I comment there, it's public. Uh, well, if you right. comment on John's, like this, yeah. this one yeah. now, if you're starting to use this web annotation tool, this that's, is public. this is public. Like you can go to John's okay. website right now, 
put genius.it in there yeah, and you I can make it. another comment, you know, and like then you and I can be chatting in the comments about John Syke. Okay. Maybe we should do that for the next half hour. Well, what do you have an acquisition lab on that? If it's a page that's behind a for like a behind a firewall or a page that's being protected by password security, it's like could you annotate an each well page? Right. Um, like a page that has that you have to be logged in like yeah. You go to your Google and Gmail account. That's a good and question. Log in and then, then put a, uh, the genius um, wrapper on top of it and then annotate it. Right. That might be why you couldn't do it in the Google form. Right, let's yeah. see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or that was, but that was probably a link though, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, because that was bad. kicking out, yeah. Um, I'm also thinking about the like the open author, pre the press books thing that Steele was talking about yeah. a couple of weeks ago. Like if we had textbooks in there and then we had students annotating the online e-texts over it over the course of the years, like that would be kind of an amazing resource or really complicated and terrible to have to deal with as a student. Well, because that's open, right? That's open source. So that you should not have a problem with. That should be like anyone else. But the problem is, is then if you do it one semester and the next semester all the yeah. students have. Oh. Yeah. Hey. So I mean, you know, like uh, this is just at, at some random part of my learning UW site. Like, I mean, you get sort of you get sort of a message like this. So I think sites that are logged in, like sites that you need to be logged into, it's probably unlikely that you can get to them. But I mean, except like the WordPress sites that you have locked down. Right. Those still work. The, yeah. I mean, those still you can do the genius. Stuff yeah. Too. Well, there's, but his aren't locked down. They're just secret. They're secret. Yeah. Oh, so you don't, don't have to log in that system. system. You just have to oh. know what the link is. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. So when you go through Genius, your prop, what you're doing is Genius is running the web page and then running the layer on top of it, and you're accessing that, that top layer. You aren't accessing the website directly. You aren't accessing the servers. So. Probably, yeah. Uh, you're accessing it through Genius. Not you're accessing it through Genius. So Genius has to be accessing you right. feel he's well saying no you can't go here all right and then it, then you then have the problem okay. yeah all right but again like that's all stuff I don't know like because I haven't tested all possible use cases yeah right. oh yeah I, I don't Why actually, not? I don't know how how private and public these things can get you know what I mean and, um, well the unpublished I think is, is yeah. a good that's a good step I think that would solve a lot of your yeah. problems because the student would have to make it public if it's a student page or the class page that all students could contribute to? Is it a class page that you're having that all students could contribute to? So they all have access to one web page? No, that's the site that I run now. The class blog. Yeah, the class blog is, um, no, I create a separate page for each student. So oh, okay. what you saw here, like this is each student has their own page that oh. TA and I created. Um, oh, okay, so sure, all right. You know, so, so then, yeah. Uh, so they can't see each other's, or can they can? Well, so here's the trick. Um, you know, this is this is a site I created for for one of my students. Um, this is the unannotated version of it. Um, presumably, she's done the assignment now, and if if I'm logged in, I can get to the genius version of it. So there's her annotations to the site that she's done. Um, you see, like our. Our, the template we use has one of these, so yeah. like they could technically pop over to another student's and see it. And I asked about like, oh, can we take this off? This is a template we use across like a whole bunch of our class course blogs, so it seemed like a lot of work for the guy down in the tech department to do this on my behalf. But I could have gotten to take that out if I. Well, really and if they're, if they're, but again, they're doing different articles. Texts, yeah, I cared less about it. You know, if anything, that's kind of a neat thing because they can see well. How did Megan do sure. hers? And I got to make sure that mine is at least this good. Right, right, right. So they can sort of, it's a. a yeah, and again, my, my worry when I was doing it before, when there was only like three source texts, is like I was just worried that they would all start doing the same kind of annotations. Sure. Now, since a lot of the assignment is based on like how well did you pick a source text that speaks to course materials, you know, I mean, now that I have that part of the rubric in there, I worry a little less about. It. So I didn't make the tech guy go through all the the hassle that it was going to be. Well, help me thank Jeremy for coming in and sharing.